Hello, hello. Welcome back for another YouTube video. My name is Brittany and I'm a family nurse practitioner with SMMP Reviews. Today we are going to briefly review a topic that can be a little hard to pin down and that's cardiac murmurs. Before we get started, for testing purposes you do not need to know those nitty gritty details about murmurs. For a deeper dive into the need to know information about cardiac murmurs, I suggest checking out our review courses that cover this topic more in depth. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's just start with a brief review of the anatomy of the heart. We have two sides of the heart, the right and the left. Each side has two chambers. The upper chambers are the atria and the lower chambers are the ventricles. There are four heart valves, the tricuspid, mitral, pulmonic, and aortic. What exactly causes a murmur? Murmurs can develop because of abnormal blood flow through those heart valves due to stenosis, regurgitation, or prolapse of the heart valves. There are two main categories of murmurs, systolic and diastolic murmurs. Systolic murmurs are heard with the S1 sound and finish with or before that S2 sound. So think lub, whoosh, dub. Our main systolic murmurs include mitral regurgitation, physiologic murmurs, so like those murmurs heard during pregnancy, aortic stenosis, and mitral valve prolapse. Systolic murmurs are the only murmurs that radiate to other locations outside of the heart. So that is a major hint for those of you who are about to take your exam. For example, aortic stenosis radiates to the neck or the carotid arteries. Systolic murmurs are also typically more benign in nature. Now diastolic murmurs are murmurs that begin with or after that S2 sound and end before the next S1. So think lub, dub, whoosh. The main diastolic murmurs are mitral stenosis and aortic regurgitation. Diastolic murmurs tend to be the more dangerous type. So if you hear a diastolic murmur in the clinic, this warrants an immediate referral. What do you remember about murmur grades? These are one way that we can assess the severity of murmurs. Grade one through three range from barely audible to moderately loud. What is significant about grade four? This is a benchmark for murmurs, as this is the grade where we begin to feel that palpable thrill. Grade five and six also have that thrill and can even be heard with the stethoscope lightly placed over the heart or in the case of grade six, can be heard without the stethoscope. Okay, let's apply what we've reviewed here with a quick practice question. A 68 year old patient presents to the clinic today to establish care. The nurse practitioner auscultates a faint murmur that has no palpable thrill, but can be heard in the patient's neck. What type of murmur does the patient most likely have? So we've got our options here. A is aortic regurgitation, B aortic stenosis, C mitral regurgitation, or D mitral stenosis. What do you think here? All right, let's walk through this one together. One more time, which type of murmurs radiate outside the heart? That's gonna be our systolic murmurs. Right away, we can get rid of answers A and D which are both diastolic murmurs. We know that this murmur is a systolic murmur. The murmur is radiating to the neck. So if we think of the anatomy of the heart, which valve is closest to the neck? That's gonna be the aortic valve. So the answer here would be B, aortic stenosis, which is a systolic murmur. I hope this video helps you understand some of the key points of cardiac murmurs. If you are interested in learning more about murmurs and other cardiovascular topics, please check out our review courses. We also have a free community of students who are preparing for exams that you can check out. Our Facebook group is here linked in the description. And here are the references used for this video. And please check out our other YouTube videos and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date on our upcoming content. We are here to support you on your NP journey and we are always rooting for you.